Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. Zelda Breath of the Wild and the Nintendo Switch are out. Two safety concerns. Don't eat your cartridges, and this is a delicate piece of hardware. It's very thin, you know, not a lot of protection. You know, even the box isn't... So yes, of course, the big news that everyone's talking about is that the Nintendo Switch is here. Here it is. This is this is the console. Uh, the dock isn't that much bigger than it. It's one of the smallest consoles ever, which is, you know, saying something compared to the Wii U and the Wii. That's not, you know, it's pretty much the same size, but hey, it's portable. It's got these little Joy-Con things and uh, Breath of the Wild, one of the best launch games ever. It's getting insane reviews. Like it's it's like already one of the best reviewed games of all time. And uh, it's, it's new and it's all crazy. So this is your Joy-Con grip controller. It's how most of you are to be playing, playing most of your games most of the time. It's one of the smallest controllers ever. Really, really tiny. The buttons are, I think, even smaller than 3DS buttons, which is saying a lot. It doesn't take that much to get used to, um, but overall as a controller, it doesn't really stack up to the, you know, the PS4 uh, DualShock. Uh, controller or the Xbox One uh, standard or even Pro Elite controller. The analog sticks are really finicky, weird. Like they're like they're like PS Vita analog sticks, except not as good. Um, the main drawback, though, is that if you want to play on your TV and you run out of juice with this, you're, you're fucked. You don't get to play video games anymore on your TV. But then you'd have to take the Joy Cons and put them on the console and uh, take the USB-C charger from the dock and put it into the, uh, the Switch screen itself, and that's the only way you're gonna be able to play, unless you get a grip charger controller, which is gonna set you back an extra 30 bucks, or you get the uh, Pro Controller, which is you know more standard size controller that I assume most of us uh, gamers are gonna wanna get for the majority of games that aren't gonna be using or utilizing the gimmicks of the, the Joy-Cons, it's gonna set you back 70 bucks. That compiled with the fact that the thing only has got 32 gigs of memory just makes this seem like an unfinished console and bundle. And the fact that it didn't have a great launch, uh, you know, game-wise, you know, it has a dozen games, uh, most of which you can download, um, but with the cartridges, it's super fast, you know, don't have to really worry about it. If you're just doing cartridges, you don't have to worry about the memory, which I think is what we're used to of playing the, with the Wii U. I'm sure many of you didn't need SD cards unless you bought things digitally, which many people didn't do because Nintendo doesn't do very good when it comes to putting on sales on their digital platforms. They kind of just really are harking on nostalgia to be their main factor of uh, revenue. And it's worked out relatively well for them. Um, I don't have many things uh, negative to say about the console. Uh, so far, I played uh, Breath of the Wild for a few hours uh, yesterday on my Twitch channel. Awesome game, beautiful game, fun game. It's my first ever Zelda game, and I'm really, really digging it. And uh, it, I'm really looking forward to just playing more of that game. It's it's super fun. Um, but the console itself, you know, while not a lot of us were hoping this would be our main console to watch YouTube or Twitch or, you know, web browsing or things like that that you can do, on your PS4 or your Xbox One or your PC home setups, um, that's not a huge drawback for me because we already have our main ways of consuming all that things as a, uh, a home set top box like platform. But at the same time, the main thing is games and how you know the console works with those games. Can the idiosyncrasies of the Joy Cons? really enhance your experience of the games that will be available. I, there's definitely gonna be yeses and nos. Um, they, we don't have a huge uh, launch with a lot of uh, ports coming to the game and not a ton of first party titles, but Breath of the Wild is out, that's super fun. Obviously you can get it for the Wii U if you're not planning on getting the Switch or you're waiting to get the Switch until more reasons to get the console are available, but there are plenty of people that want to buy the console that haven't been able to get to yet. So good luck to you if you want the Switch and you haven't been able to get one. 
and um, we're just gonna, you know, have a wait and see. This is gonna be, a, you know, a casual, ongoing process of results and updates where people, you know, early reviews of either Zelda Breath of the Wild or the Nintendo Switch. That was, that's early access, not full builds that they were reviewing. So that's what the industry does. Everything's all about speed and speed and being the first to do something. So obviously there are a lot of things that either are lost in translation or just aren't handled very well for one reason or the other. There's been complaints about people getting blue screens of death or just straight up black screens. Obviously one to three percent of all switches will be dead on arrival because it's an electronic. Nothing is exempt to that rule. Um, and there has been issues with the desyncing of the left Joy-Con people have been noting uh, while playing with just the Joy-Cons mostly. And there was supposed to be a patch that would address this to, uh, on day one yesterday that apparently didn't do as much, but it's still not super duper common. But when you do encounter it, it does seem like a common hindrance when you do get it. So all the more reason to buy a pro controller or wait until you have more reasons to buy the console. But overall, it's been a positive experience. It's not perfect, but it's set out what it said it was going to be, and that's the most important thing. Or at least it's on track to. Blizzard has ended with the teasing game, and they have shown us our new Overwatch character, Orisa. As we expected, it is a tank, it is a robot built by Effie, and it's a hero. Not, you know, not a villain. Some people were worried about, you know, is Effie, you know, just, just trying to go for a power grab right now? But we learned that Doomfist attacked and she built Orisa as a countermeasure to save Numbani and all the people around it with those OR-15s that didn't really do the job, so it took one of the chassis and made all her super genius child prodigy enhancements to it. And uh, it's a fun female robot with some personality, and it's uh, it's got four legs, it's got a gun, it's got the fortify mode, which enables it to increase its defenses as well as being uh, unhindered by uh, CC effects like flashbang or sleep darts or things of that nature, which is super cool and also has a projected barrier and her ult is basically a damage boost to everybody around the object that she drops for her ult for a limited period of time, like a bunch of Caduceus staffs just going to everybody within the vicinity of that uh, thing. So I think it's really cool. I'm very much looking forward to it. We definitely need another tank and we were all expecting a tank whether it was Doomfist or not and there's still the question of Doomfist being a playable character because we know that there now there's the Doomfist gauntlet has been stolen that is live and that he attacked Numbani and Orisa has been sent to save the day but Orisa is the character that we have now. We've seen all of her skins and, and a couple emotes as well as uh, a voice line or two that we're you know getting more and more and we should only expect to wait a week or two before she is out of the PTR and into the live servers as was with Sombra and Anna. Very much looking forward to the character. I think she'll fulfill a specific type of role that will make uh, a lot more team synergies viable when it comes to either having a solo tank or dual tank or lower levels of play that uh, you really rely on communication to make the best out of a tank, say shooting through a teammate's Reinhardt shield or being able to get hooks with Roadhogs. I think Orisa is going to be able to be a self-sustaining tank that won't do a ton of damage, but also being able to protect her team and allow them to do a lot in team fights. Epic Games' long gestating game Fortnite is going to be gaining an open beta sometime in 2018. That's right, the game that was, you know, announced in 2015 that people was like, oh my gosh, this looks awesome. It's Fortnite, looks like some sort of, maybe it's a tower defense, maybe it's a wave base, maybe it's like Left 4 Dead, but it looks cool and different. And then we heard nothing. And then we heard a little something and then a bunch of nothing. And now after a long time of hearing nothing, we knew that they were still working on the game and they're like, yeah, it's gonna be coming out in an open beta for 2018. And that beta is gonna last a long time a la Paragon that's going on on the PlayStation. So we're gonna expect a long beta and maybe the game doesn't come out for a couple of years, but hey, we're gonna get an open beta in a year or so. So there's that. A game that we will be getting this year, however, as a bit of a surprise to some people, unless you looked at Target's websites in the past week, leaked the evidence of uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War, the sequel to Shadow of Mordor, will be coming out on August 27th to the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Shadow of Mordor won a bunch of awards, was very, very well received, had some really good DLC as well. I myself haven't played it. I, I've 
owned it for like two years. But uh, really good news because everyone who loves Shadow of Mordor is really, really excited for Shadow of War. So August 22nd, not too shabby, and they had to announce it probably a little bit early because Target just uh, let the cat out of the bag. We have learned that Donnie Yen from IP Man or Yip Man, depending on your pronunciation, 1, 2, 3, and the upcoming fourth movie, as well as Rogue One, a Star Wars story, will be starring as the main character for a Sleeping Dogs movie adaptation. It's uh, another video game movie adaptation. We, it's going to be an action movie with an action star, a well-established, globally known action star that everybody loves. So that's got something going for it. He's going to be playing, you know, the main character from Sleeping Dogs, which I own on PS3 and 360 and the Xbox One, and I still haven't played it, but it's been free on all of their free game services, so I'll get around to it. Um, where you are playing uh, a cop who is undercover trying to take down the triads. So... It's got the makings for, you know, a decent shot at there being the very first good video game adaptation. I know a lot of people are waiting for video games to follow the way of comic book movies where everyone's making comic book movies and they're super successful. It seems like video games would be the next thing that they would suck all of the resources from and have success on the big screen. But, you know, we had to wait like 20-ish years for a comic book movies to start getting good, but you know, we've been waiting 35-ish years for video game movies to start getting good, so we're still waiting on the first one. Is it going to be a, a, a weird, you know, super not triple A mega ultra title? Like, you know, we would expect from, you know, a Halo or an Uncharted movie, which those keep never getting off the ground. But a, a game like Sleeping Dogs, which is a well-received, well-liked video game, but still not a humongous franchise from a insanely popular uh, storyline, maybe that's what we need. And they have the actor to do it, so here's hoping because Assassin's Creed was... Ugh. What was that ending? Anywho, that is what mattered this week. If you'd like to know what matters in the future, hit the subscribe button. One of these videos comes out every single Saturday. Follow me on Twitter. Hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you next time.